Welcome, crypto fam, to the number one daily Bitcoin pod. In today's show, I'll be breaking down the latest technical analysis as well as a potential black swan event. We'll also be discussing the Bitcoin supply to run out literally on the exchanges in nine months. According to Bybit, can you say supply shock? We'll also be discussing BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF is the only fund with inflows since Friday. I'll be breaking down the latest Bitcoin ETF data as well as Peter Schiff questions Bitcoin ETF demand as well as $100,000 Bitcoin price target. I'll be breaking this down for you as well as the latest out of Hong Kong with their Ether and Bitcoin ETFs. According to the top analyst Eric Balchunas, they'll be lucky to get $500 million. Also breaking news, Iraq to start mining Bitcoin on a nation state level alongside the UAE and five other nations. I'll be breaking this down for you. We'll also be taking a look at the overall crypto market. All this plus so much more in today's show. Now, happy BTFD. Take advantage of this dip. Bitcoin down 3000 on the daily. You already know what time it is. Shout out to everyone in the live chat. What it do? Happy Tuesday. What's popping? I'll let your boy. Shout out Molly. Shout out Eric Castro, Joe Mellon, Don George, Juan Espino. Good morning, family. Good afternoon. Just bought the dip, says Moonstone. Let's go. Welcome, welcome. Hey, JV. Good day watching the stream from work. I appreciate the support. Turbit, smart man. Why not get paid on the clock? to get and watch some crypto news alerts. Why not? What up from Utah? Shout out G Biddy. I dig the username G Biddy. Uh, let's get things a moving. You already know Roger Phil. Cheers to that. Call me the orange goblin. Cheap bags. Thanks. Paper hands. Tell them. Bring facts. Appreciate your broski. Welcome to the stream. Let's get it. Hello, says Ashley. Hello. Good to see you as well. Eric, do y'all retweet the link on X? Thanks for the reminder. It helps out a lot. So every day before I go live, I do make a post on X to tune into the live show and your retweets are greatly appreciated. So thank you, family. I just purchased another 100 Bitcoin. Not really, just another $900. Hey, at least you stacked those stats, Peter. God bless you. And shout out to Russia. Let me know where you guys are all tuned in from. This is a live and interactive show each and every day. So don't be a stranger. Don't be shy and holla at your boy. You know what I mean? What up, JV? Uh, shout out BS. Shout out Mars904. Howdy, howdy, how from South Dakota, South Dakota in the building. Uh, shout out to Jennifer and the mods. Greatly appreciate y'all. Hodl and BTFD, relax and ride the roller coaster. We're about to go parabolic. That's right, yo. Four days away from the having, less than four days. It's like three days and a few hours, which ultimately means at this current point, uh, we could see the having this Saturday. Stack it to Satin Saturday on 420. Make some noise for that. Just Jessica for now. Stack them stats. Tell them. Norway in the building. Shout out Bina. Good to see you. Joe Folan. Chilling in Wisconsin. Nipsey doing his thang thang. That's definitely a BTFD signal when he's chilling like that. Just FYI. Shout out Why Bother. Jordan in the building. Arizona in the building. Shout out, Darren. What it do? GBD420 all day, every day. Send it. Sunny Santa Barbara. Pizza party for the having. Why not? Let's have a pizza party for the having. Hello from Mexico. Shout out to my fam in Mexico. Uh, shout out Hector Base. Chilling in the grow room. Lights went live just before you did. Love to hear that. 420 send it, Eric. Howdy from England. Shout out to the UK. Keep your Bitcoin. Don't let the giant corporations trick you into losing your future. Tell them, Roger. Hello from the Philippines. Shout out Unholy Almond. <laughs> Must have for the party. JV, what's good? Hailing from planet Earth. Uh, shout out to Mother Earth, a.k.a. Gaia. We greatly appreciate y'all. Catch the knife. It's going to bounce, bounce. Come on, bounce. Texas in the building. Shout out to the right, the wrong. Let's go. Edinburgh at the physio. Shout out Ominin. Uh, dirty. Grayscale is corrupt. Tell them. Who's not corrupt in today's world? What big institution <laughs> isn't corrupt, right? A Nippinator indicator uh, incoming. Good morning, my dude. A uh, good morning, Shaduza seven eighty six. Don't believe the fud. That's right, McFootnator. Never believe the fud. That's right. Shout out, Greg. What up? What up? 
Mistava, welcome. Doc Denzel, welcome. The number one pod. Pump it up. You already know. Shout out Marcos. But anyways, fam, if you're new to the channel, important to smash that subscribe button to receive daily premium crypto news alerts every day, just like this. Also, hit that thumbs up button. It's free to do so, and it helps out supporting the show, getting more eyeballs to the stream. It's always greatly appreciated. Today is pod episode number 1611. That's right, April 16th, 2024. Having only three to four days out. Will having 2024 land on Friday or sat stack and Saturday on 420? Let me know your thoughts. Let's kick it off with our market watch as we do each and every day. We got Bitcoin down almost 5% on the daily at the time of the live stream, hovering above 62,100. Let's see if that critical 60,000 support holds up. We also have Ether uh, correcting 5%, trading just above 3,000 as all the major alts are correcting and in the red. And the alts, can you say? Rack City. And checking out coinmarketcap.com. We're sitting at a 2.29 trillion market cap with a, about 118 billion in volume for the past 24 hours. Bitcoin dominance 54.1% with the Ether dominance 16.2%. My question for y'all, how high do you feel the Bitcoin dom will climb for this particular cycle? Holla. And checking out the top 100 crypto gainers for the past 24 hours, we got Celestia, OKB, and Tether, because virtually everything is correcting and in the red. Not a good sign when the top gainer is a stable coin. Just saying, family, and below that, more stable coins, USDC and DAI. So yeah, not a good look right now in the market. And checking out the crypto bubbles, get more of a visual perspective. You can see the alts getting slaughtered uh, right now. And zooming out on the monthly, not a good month either for roughly 90 to 95% of these alts and uh, checking out the crypto greed and fear index. We're currently rated a 65 greed yesterday, 70 foe last week an 80 and last month, a 79 in extreme greed and checking out the Bitcoin having countdown. According to this countdown calendar, we have three days and nine hours left until Bitcoin having 2024 currently scheduled to take place very early AM on 420. That's right. Sat stack and Saturday. And that's going to occur at block height. 840,000. We're currently at block height, 839,493. Only 507 blocks away from the most significant event that only occurs in crypto every four years. And did I say, it's going up forever, Laura. So yeah, it's already about to go down. So anyways, fam, let me know where you feel the Bitcoin price is likely to take us leading into the halving later this week. I'll let your boy. Right above Augusta, Augusta, Georgia. Georgia. Johnston is the name of the town. RWA coin narrative says Mistova. Oh, my God. Adorable Nipster. Yeah, Nipster is a little chilly from the fan, I take it. So he had to do what he does best. Put the blanket over him. He may come out later. Have <laughs> He may make an appearance. Crypto news alerts. Welcome, Tough T. T-Man. Having zero impact, only 1.8 million Bitcoin left for 140 years. Let that sink in. You already know supply shock of income in only a matter of time. We'll be discussing that as well here in a little bit. Uh, what is that? Bratchville, shout out daddy-o. BlackRock can buy the rest in two minutes. Yeah, no joke. One hundred, please. That's right, hundred K. It's a given that'll occur. Definitely this cycle. Don't even question that. I expect more downward action after Jerome Powell speaks today. Oh snap! You know they do what they do best. They love to spread fud, fudge numbers, and ultimately manipulate financial markets. So I won't be surprised there, Joe, if that does happen. But considering we're at sixty G's right now, sixty G. 60 G's. It's red panty night when you sign to fight me, yeah? Back, back at your back, back at home with your, your wife. wife. You know what I mean? It's a celebration. It's a celebration. When you stack them sats on the low like this, what the frick is going on with the ETFs? I know, York. I think GBTC continues dumping even after their CEO said, we're at an equilibrium. Sure, buddy. Whatever you say. Uh, come on, Bitcoin pump. This time next week, 150 G's Bitcoin. Send it, Peter. I love it. Tomas saying 30,000. I find that highly improbable, but hey, teach their own. Thanks for sharing. Why stablecoin on XRP? Anyone? Ask T-Man. Is Bitcoin a good stock? 
Bitcoin is definitely not a stock. It's Bitcoin. Uh, one big corrupt system, says Yorkie. Facts. Learning so much from this fam and JV. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, Moonstone Day. Not a family. Appreciate your support. B E F D. Tell them facts. I sold 10,000 Amazon stock to buy the sale in the morning. Bitwise fun. Shout out to my uncle Lou Skunt, who taught me about the ETFs when I was a kid. Shout out to Toasty Toast and his uncle Lou. Much respect, family. Let's go. Hey, JB, hope you're doing well pre having manipulation. 100% Tobias. 100%, in my opinion. I am a buyer at 50 G's, baby. You're in the green, Yorkie Hunt. Love it, love it. Corn sale, stack that Bitcoin, the only non-GMO Bitcoin in existence on the planet. Hey, guys, almost made it in time. Welcome to the stream. Relaxing, let's freaking go. Well, 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 you know what time it is. Whew. We back, baby. We back. <laughs> what will happen after three days? There's going to be a halving. Stick around. We'll be discussing it in greater detail. I'm ready for the full force for the bull market. That's what's up. End of the cycle. 500 G's, baby. Buy that corn. It's going to pop, pop, pop. Tell them one house. What up, JV? What up, Coos Dog? People have saying having is priced in. Does the having really do anything? I mean, personally, it's a matter of opinion. I don't think the having is priced in whatsoever. We're sitting at a $7,000 discount from the November 2021 all-time high. So I don't understand how that's even logical that the halving is already priced in. You're going to see the halving priced in uh, within the next six to 18 months. And let's have the conversation then. Bitcoin about to go on sale again, says Michael. Mike Hunt says 100000 in four weeks. Send it. <laughs> I'm all for it. Let's go. Let's not forget and underestimate what Bitcoin is capable of. Early February, we were sitting at 40,000. Then by March, we were 70,000. You guys forget? That's like a $30,000 worth of rippage in a matter of a month. So Bitcoin can soar from 70,000 to 100,000 like that. Just saying, it can do what it want to do. It's on its own vector. My leverage 2x Bitcoin buys are getting wrecked, but my normal Bitcoin still going up quite a lot. A lot that tends to happen trading with leverage uh, family. That's the downside. Easy to get wrecked, right? Great risk equals great rewards. And trading with leverage is damn right a great risk. Loving these cheaper sets, uh, says Coos Dog. 100% more time to stack. Tell them, Paul. But anyways, let's dive into today's Bitcoin TA. Check out the charts and where the price action likely to take us next. Bitcoin faces new lower Bitcoin price targets after dropping up to 15% since the weekend. Analysts are lining up to consider where the market might bottom. So let's discuss it. After challenging 61,000, a significant rebound failed to hold for Bitcoin, which is now sitting at 62,000 at the time of the recording. And according to Mark Cullen, the course is set for a fresh attack on 60,000 resistance. Using the Elliott Wave method, he suggests a final move down could come in imminently, taking Bitcoin to around the 50, uh, 59,000 mark. Quoting him here, still very possible that there is one more leg down for Bitcoin to complete the wave C of the larger flat corrective formation. He also says should compete, or I'm sorry, complete today if it is going to play out. So let's see if 60,000 holds family. The 59,000 level would put the Bitcoin price action at its lowest since late February and represents a large down draw, uh, drawdown uh, versus the recent all-time high of 20%. And continuing others, including Matthew Hyland, look to the upcoming weekly close for insights into the nature of the current pullbacks, staying power, as he uploaded this chart uh, and shared the following. This is highly dependent on how the weekly candle closes. The last time it tested it, it was a great buying opportunity and never closed below it. The close will be what matters most. So a very important weekly close here. Uh, full candles below the 10-week simple moving average last occurred mid-2023, according to TradingView. Now, according to Bing Dang, a contributor to on-chain analytics platform, CryptoQuant, the longer time frames could yield frustrating conditions for the Bitcoin bulls, analyzing his adjustment cumulative value days destroyed, which is the CVDD metric. He predicted Bitcoin can stay lower for longer before re-challenging its highs. That's right. CVDD measures the number of days a coin has been in its wallet when it moves on chain and multiplies 
this by the current price. Quoting them here, my adjusted CVDD metric recognized the local tops very well. And now I'm looking forward to Bitcoin backing to test and accumulate at phase two, which is the orange line in this chart. And while history shows that deeper correction can occur, he added that he did not expect the current geopolitical impetus for the down move to reach the levels of panic scene, for example, during COVID-19 back in March of 2020. Now, a trip to the chart's phase one line is just under the 40,000 level now, constituting the worst case. Now, personally, I don't see that happening, but I respect the analysts' take here as anything can happen in crypto. Welcome to crypto, family. But anyways, let me know your thoughts on some of that sentiment and how high do you think we're likely to climb and or how low uh, here uh, this month of April and for the weekly close post having, which more than likely the having is going to be this Friday or Saturday. So let's go. Shout out Cat Press. Good afternoon, family. Remember to smash the like. Thank you, Jerome Smith. Button for the effort put forth by JV on the end, the infamous Nipsey. Can't forget about the Nippinator, right? I hit the like. Now I am hitting the bong. Well done, Joe. <laughs> there are still a couple of million Bitcoin on the exchanges for me to buy and sell. Yeah, they say roughly two milli. Uh, how many Bitcoins has Grayscale left? Uh, th just over 300,000, unfortunately. Hey, Gary, I'm 64 and have 85% in Bitcoin. Says relaxing. I DCA'd based on Bitcoin's power law chart. Says Toasty Toast. And right now it's a good time to buy. Shout out to my cousin, Eton Beaver. Shout out to the Eton Beaver. Black Swan tastes like chicken. Tell them, Dusty. If we hit 40, I'm getting another loan. A lot of people are going to be getting a lot of loans, including uh, MicroStrategy's Michael Saylor. Uh, so wait to buy more or get it in before the halving. That's a decision you got to make on your own, GBitty. Uh, what kind of advice can you guys give GBitty? Let us know. The problem is there are too many lazy people who invest in Bitcoin but have no idea what they are doing and wind up scared and selling their Bitcoin. This is a shame, but it is true, Roger. Good point. Shout out Allah. Turka TV. I appreciate you subbing to number one daily Bitcoin pod. Respect. Yeah, man. So I'm telling you, I am not meant to be happy, says Bill. There will always be something. War in Iraq, mining are two things. This could stand in our way for the crypto flying. I don't see why Iraq mining Bitcoin would be uh, get in the way of Bitcoin flying. Maybe war is definitely not good for financial markets except for the ones creating and uh, funding the wars, which we already know who that is. This downturn is a gift before the having Word. Uh, what does that say? Panacha plus Bitcoin equals love. There we go. Everyone is uh, talking up a drop in the price, which typically indicates pump. That's right. Bitcoin typically moves against the consensus. So if everyone is anticipating 40,000, for example, we may moon to 100,000 next week. It's just saying anything is possible. However, if everyone is anticipating we're going to pump to the moon, then maybe we do do uh, you know, drop beyond another significant level. You never know. Shout out Dirty and welcome to the micro strategy. For those that don't know, you can support the channel by becoming a member. You get that badge next to your name and notice your name actually turns green. So you get recognition in the chat here and it's always appreciated. So thank you, family. So yeah, only 15 million in circulation though, over 4 million lost. We got to keep that in mind. Good point. Uh, one house. Brazilian Bitcoiner, let's go. Shout out Brazil, Somos Hype. Welcome, welcome. Bina says bye, bye, bye. Bitcoin don't care. That's right. Honey Badger don't care. Rob C, buy the dip, BTFD. I am hoping for massive retail FOMO so I can watch it ride up. Damn right. Well, what's the number one crypto? It's a good question, Mark. One moment. Which one's the best crypto asset? Well, Bitcoin's the best crypto asset. Okay. What's the second best? There is no second best. I'm not one. Uh, I'm sorry, I lied. I'm number one, two, three, four, and five. Sell them. But anyways, fam, next story of the day. Let's discuss the supply shock, which we can see in the next nine months. According to the Bybit Exchange, as the Bitcoin supply is running dry on the exchanges. That's right. Bitcoin supply on crypto exchanges will dry up in nine more months. Thanks to the 50% supply issuance reduction of this week's Upcoming Bitcoin halving. Provided that the inflows from the U.S. Bitcoin ETFs continue, Bitcoin's post-halving supply dynamic will see exchange reserves run out of Bitcoin, according to an April 15th report by the exchange Bybit. Quoting them here, Bitcoin reserves and all centralized exchanges have been depleting faster, with only 2 million Bitcoins left. If we assume a daily inflow of 500 million to the Bitcoin spot ETFs, the equivalent of around 7,100 Bitcoins will leave exchange reserves daily, suggesting it will only take nine months to consume all of the remaining reserves. And that doesn't take into account 
the uh Retail, that doesn't take into account nation, state adoption, sovereign wealth fund adoption, all the other things. This is just based on ETF inflows currently, which is mind boggling because we also have ETFs about to be launched in Hong Kong. They already got the green light as we just Gust on yesterday's pod. Now, Bitcoin reserves on centralized exchanges fell to near three-year lows of 1.94 million Bitcoin as of today, April 16th, according to CryptoQuant. So here's the latest data. There's only 1.94 million Bitcoin currently available on all the crypto exchanges. Let that sink in. The report comes amid a wider market slump, which saw Bitcoin fall 10% during the past week to 60, now 1,000-ish as of today. By bit, the world's third largest exchange, oh wow, I didn't realize they were so large, expects Bitcoin prices to start recovering from the current correction, according to the report, quoting them again. With this in mind, it is unsurprising that the Bitcoin price may continue to climb before the halving or even afterward, as the supply squeeze propels the price to another new record. There you go. Now, meanwhile, institutional interest in Bitcoin is on the rise. Weekly inflows into the spot Bitcoin ETFs have been slowing down since March. Last week saw over almost 200 million worth of net inflows into the ETFs, down from 2.58 2.58 billion in the week beginning March 11th, according to Dune Analytics. And despite the recent slump, the Bitcoin ETFs amassed over 841,000 biddies, worth 53 billion, with over 12.7 billion net flows since launch. Now, Bitcoin investor allocation has risen since last September. Institutions are allocating an average of 40% of total assets to Bitcoin, while retail investors average Bitcoin allocation a 24%, according to Bybit's asset allocation report. Now, Bybit noted that both crypto-native firms and traditional institutions are getting increasing exposure to Bitcoin via the ETFs or proxy stocks, such as MicroStrategy. The exchange expects more institutions to follow suit, quoting the report again. We believe that not all institutions have been able to gain exposure since the approval of the Bitcoin spot. ETFs in January 2024, as their investment mandates restrict them from investing in new products that have been in the market for only a few months. So there's a lot more institutional FOMO to come, is what they're ultimately saying. But I want to know your thoughts. Do you think the Bitcoin supply and the exchanges run dry, potentially sometime this year or within the next nine months, according to the analyst report? Holla. Love and light all, love and light Jay Ford, welcome. I am going to DCA forever, but especially for the next nine months. God bless you, Molly. Love to hear that. Will Smith the, uh, Will Smith the like. Uh, thank you, Dirty Bird. Sometimes you got to iron mic. You know what I mean? Iron Mike the like as well, whatever it takes. I have had a vision of MicroStrategy hitting 5,200. Good Lord, Yorkie. If the ETFs keep buying at the rate they are, it should be by June. Very possible. What are we in? So we're April, May, June. So you're saying within the next 60 days at this pace, we can see the supply shock. I know anything is possible, especially post having. And again, we have a having later this week. I can't believe I'm actually saying that. We've been looking forward to this having for so long. It's mind boggling. Institutional FOMO is going to be off the charts. Tell them. Yes, institutional FOMO. I welcome it. FOMO like a mofo. Let's freaking go. You already know. 364 watch and only 99 likes. Please like and share to keep the show going strong with all the algorithms. Smash the like so more people can see the show as it bumps it up in the algorithm. This is fact, uh, Jerome Smith. I couldn't have said it better myself. If you're appreciating today's content, smash the like. We'll get more subs and it'll make the show that much stronger. It'll help orange pill more of the masses and help pump that Bitcoin price if you know what I mean. Bitcoin will tap 60 Gs again. It's possible. We're only 1,800 away at the current moment. Uh, 5,200 late 2025 is Yorkie's prediction for MicroStrategy. What's MicroStrategy stock uh, currently trading at, Yorkie? Right now, Bybit official exchangers have a bug. It exchanges Bitcoin to ETH, almost 10x the rate. Fully automatic. I posted a video. What? I never knew that. Uh, We're going to 17, says Mon. DCA, even if it's a million USD per Bitcoin. There you go, Jim. Love it. Uh, So Tosi Tos says, F Israel attacks Iran. We may unfortunately go down 20%, according to my friend Tess Stickles. Oh my God. Even with a supply crunch. Uh, Shout out Toasty Toast and respect and thank you for the super. Uh, like you, like Bitcoin. Let's go. Greetings from Atlanta. Shout out Peggy Paris. Appreciate your support. Shout out Atlanta ATL. Morning, JB. Love you and the best show on the tube. Uh, thank you, Noonan. Respect. Shout out Brian. What it do? Why is everyone saying we'll go to 50 G's? It's unfortunate, but most people are typically bearish, unfortunately, especially when there's 
I guess, carnage in the markets. Everyone loses hope. It's like, oh, we're just going to go down. But I think it's wishful thinking. I think people pray we're going to go down, you know, to 50, 40,000 because most of you guys maybe didn't stack enough sats or maybe the people who are praying upon the demise of Bitcoin so they can get a position. You never know. Shout out Mike Sheen. I appreciate the sub. You know what I mean? Retail FOMO is just starting. It is insane that I am getting at least four calls a day asking about buying. Wow, really? So telemarketers hitting you up from financial firms or what, Jennifer? That's pretty alarming. That's good. Shout out JV. Uh, Tony, shout out Tony. Tony Montana. Good morning from Huntington Beach, California. Shout out Happy to Hodler. Uh, <laughs> gre greetings from Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka in the building. Having in three days and 10 hours. Exactly, my man. Smash the likes. Exactly. MicroStrategy right now. KJAM says 1223 bucks. Wow. So you're ultimately predicting Toasty Toast that we do a 5X on MicroStrategy stock. I think that's very probable uh, by 2025. You know what I mean? I can see Bitcoin doing 5 to 10X. Definitely can see a MicroStrategy doing a 5X. Just saying. Right now, Bybit's official exchanger. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that. I'm a stack 500 more Bitcoin tonight. Let's go. We need to hold 60 Gs, baby. Yeah, we need to hold 60 Gs, yo. 60 Gs, baby! <laughs> <laughs> if it goes down to 50, I'll take a loan for sure. Uh, mill, baby, BC here. That's what's up. The prior having take six to nine weeks to play out before the rip. So that would mean in roughly two months. So right now it's April, mid-April, then mid-June we can rip. Morning, fam. Hey, everyone. Uh, shout out to the best crypto news on YouTube and Rumble. That's right. Shout out to the Rumble fam. Shout out Creeper420. Appreciate it. Thanks, JV. North Alabama on your side. Shout out North Alabama. Let's go. No friends and friends of friends. Oh, wow. Friends of friends of friends asking about Bitcoin. They don't know where to start buying or how much. Well, that's what's up, that they're reaching out to you. Definitely a good sign. It's simple. I buy every day and hodl. Love it. Happy hodler. Your name speaks volumes. Someone give the damn boot freaking scammers. Yeah, please boot the scammers. Anyone pushing scams is not cool. Unacceptable. No warnings. You're out. Just saying. Uh, Seville VA in the house. Uh, shout out Mars. Appreciate y'all as well. But let's dive into the next story of the day. Discuss the latest more detail with the BlackRock Bitcoin ETF. The only fun with inflows since Friday, which is interesting. BlackRock's Bitcoin ETF has been the only U.S. spot Bitcoin fund to see inflows over the past couple of days, with all the other ETFs posting zero inflows or even lower. The iBit uh, Bitcoin Trust posted net inflows of 73 mil on April 15th, down 111 million uh, from the prior day. The eight other ETFs, bar Grayscales, posted zero flows over the past two days, according to Farside data. iBit's inflows weren't enough to outpace the outflows from GBTC. It saw 110 million in outflows April 15th, slowing from April 14th. 166 million. Now, all 10 spot Bitcoin ETFs saw net outflows across April 14th and the 15th of 55 million and 36 million, uh, respectively, as outlined here in the chart. Now, also, the recent outflows for the US Bitcoin ETFs follow a roller coaster weekend for Bitcoin, as we pointed out. Meanwhile, global Bitcoin investment products saw outflows of 110 million for the week ending April 12th, with CoinShares research head James Butterfield said highlights the hesitancy amongst investors investors. Butterfield reported all combined crypto investment products saw net outflows of 126 million last week and week on week volumes perked from 17 billion to 21 billion dollars. Meanwhile, Iran's April 13th attack on Israel sent Bitcoin into a free fall, hitting a three week low currently of 61,900. But we do know we have a Bitcoin halving scheduled to take place sometime this week at block height. 840,000. I'm praying for it to happen on Saturday, stat sack and Saturday, just because it's 420. I feel that'd be pretty lit, pun intended. You already know, fam. Pump the likes, pump the stream. Welcome everyone just joining us and let's freaking go. My hammer just woke up, pun intended. <laughs> I dig it, I dig it, I dig it. Let's go. Pump it up if your game and went long. Yeah. When the dip hit, you just stayed like King Kong. Hey. More than five sets in your stack, then get it on. Yeah. Woo, woo. I'm 85% into Bitcoin via the ETFs. 5% Amazon, 5% NASDAQ, 3% Solana, and 2% cash, says Toasty Toast. My question, bro, why so bullish on cash? Just saying. I thought Bitcoin is as safe as gold when crisis happens. Is it too early for that in the people's 
mindset. No, I think we saw what can happen during a black swan because we witnessed it March of 2020 with what I refer to as Novid. And uh, the markets all crashed. Uh, Bitcoin dropped from seven, 8,000 range to like 3,500. Ether dropped to like $90 or something in that range and everything tanked all financial markets across the board. But then what happened? We ripped, right? And by 2021, Bitcoin hit an all-time high of 69,000. So Bitcoin ripped from 3,500. Yeah, I mean, the year of the having after a major black swan, right? And then one year later, all time high. So from 3,500 to 69,000. So we all know what Bitcoin is capable of. Keep that in mind. JB, uh, wouldn't low 50,000 not be healthy looking at the history of the Bitcoin rise to 100,000? We'll find out. Maybe it is healthy. We don't know. We'll find out. I think we can still be healthy and maintain 60,000 and just rip right on to 100,000. I think either way, Bitcoin's going to do what Bitcoin does. So prepare for the ride and expect extreme volatility as I always preach. This is normal. Volatility equals opportunity and it's life force. We welcome it. You know what I mean, the dip is not scary. I kept buying all through 2022 when it was diving. Stay strong, family. That's right. 95 or 97% Bitcoin says Zach, uh, 3% cash. Why so bullish on cash, bro? Just saying. I don't understand. Haha, <laughs> Bitcoin and chill. You got it, G-Bitty. Bitcoin and chill. For real. Orange pill. Just buy the dips in hodl mode. Tell them, Gerald. Did you say we're going to 3,000? No, I did not. I said previous cycle in 2020 after the Novid event, we dropped to 3,500. Y'all must have forgot. And a year later, 69,000. I'm just letting you guys know. Yeah, I mean, anything is possible. Had the people on my back to get a song. Red broke, have a talk, we smoked them like a bomb. Oh, yeah, we gonna update my dating app looking for girls to Bitcoin and chill. I dig it, G Biddy. I truly do. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so T E I X is a scammer because he keeps copy pasting the same scam comment. So if you're a mod, you know what to do. I appreciate it. Hope. It is still dipping on Friday, says Hillbilly Will. Uh, this is just more consolidation. It is a pause before it pops again. That's right. Next leg up. I welcome it. The official Man O C show. Awesome to be with y'all new today. Welcome family to the stream. Much appreciated. Who remembers JB? Was handing out Bitcoin on the daily shows. That's right. I think for like 90 days, I just gave away Bitcoin every day. And then we had trolls and spammers take advantage of it and it got annoying and I just stopped doing it. So you can thank the trolls uh, for that, guys. Need some cash for everyday life. Now, when I was giving it away, Bitcoin was way lower. I don't know where we were at, probably somewhere between 10 and 20,000. So let that sink in. If you stack those biddies and saved and hodled, you already know. Is the having going to do something for Bitcoin or just dump the having is extremely bullish for Bitcoin, but it's not like an instant thing. So don't get the false expectation of, oh, having day, we moon to a million dollars. No, it just means post having sometime after the having within the next 18 months, we're going to be at crazy levels that are going to blow your mind, right? So don't get it twisted. Don't have false expectations like, oh, having game over. We all win on that day. No, it's a process. That's what the previous halvings have shown us. Typically, 12 to 18 months preceding the halving, we hit a cycle peak. Unless this cycle is different, just saying, be prepared for all possibilities. Nobody really knows how the market is going to react, right? There's so many catalysts at play. Salam family, Trump 2020 foe, says Mohammed. Bitcoin to 32,000 immediately after the post halving. Then the Allah candle to 125 to 250,000. Guaranteed. I appreciate your guarantee, Muhammad. Uh, having equals built-in supply crunch precisely. Simple stock to flow. Limited supply, massive demand equals number go up. Technology. And I know I'm preaching to the choir. You guys already know. Historically, within 500 days, Bitcoin post having on average goes up 4,800%, which is 48X. Let that sink in. And we'll leave it on that note. Let's dive into our next story of the day. Let's discuss the $100,000 target from Peter Shifty. <laughs> this is actually interesting. Gold proponent Peter Schiff, everyone's favorite Bitcoin troll. Question market pundits who have a set Bitcoin price target of 100,000 and the current bull run. Shifty also took a dig at the spot Bitcoin ETFs and the demand created by the products 
for the current market. Shifty is a known Bitcoin critic and often questions its market value and real world use cases. Shift called out analysts who claim the Bitcoin price could surpass $100,000 per coin, boosted by a significant demand created by spot Bitcoin ETFs. In the April 16th post, Shift cited the bearish performance of some of the key Bitcoin related equity markets, such as Coinbase, MicroStrategy, Galaxy Digital, and a few other crypto linked stocks. He questioned why the high demand for Bitcoin is not reflected in the stocks of companies linked to BTC, quoting Peter Shifty right here. If Bitcoin ETFs are really going to send Bitcoin to 100,000 or higher, why are all the Bitcoin related equities in the bear markets? For example, uh, Coinbase down 21%, Galaxy down 26%, MicroStrategy down 33%, WGMI down 41%, Marathon Digital down 55%. Uh, BitF down 56% and Hive down 61%. Shift said Coinbase is, yeah, so what I just reiterated. However, the gold proponent didn't specify a timeline for those losses despite most Bitcoin and crypto link stocks outperforming traditional market stocks by a significant margin since the start of 2024. I'd also like to point out, he was recently interviewed, uh, Peter Schiff, by Patrick Bet David on his podcast, and he was asked, what kind of exposure to gold do you have? And he shared something I found pretty alarming. He said he has more than 50% of his portfolio in foreign gold-related stocks. So not stocks out of the United States. And that to me is a little strange, but nonetheless, uh, only in the past week have many of these stocks recorded a downturn due to the bearish momentum in the crypto market. As outlined right here, the current bearish momentum in the crypto market is no big surprise either. Market analysts have explained, which we cover often here, how Bitcoin has historically seen a pre-having dip and picks up momentum post-having. The Bitcoin having, as we know, is scheduled for later this week. Schiff didn't uh, go unnoticed. His, his dig with several Bitcoin proponents responding to his post, debunking his selective data. One user pointed out MicroStrategy stocks are up 300%. Year on year, let's not forget. Peter Schiff likes to fudge the numbers to make you know, him look impressive alongside gold, but we all know the truth. A few others called him out for his cherry picking data, precisely what I just mentioned, while sharing the performance of Bitcoin alongside gold to highlight the growth difference between the two assets. While gold has risen to new all time highs in the second quarter of this year, it pales in comparison to Bitcoin's rise. Over the same period, Bitcoin proponents Dan Held and Willie Wu also reminded Peter Shifty how he missed the opportunity to buy Bitcoin in 2013 when it was trading at around $1,000. So Schiff just seems like an eternal sore loser, uh, in my opinion. But what are your thoughts? Shout out to Peter Shifty. He actually lives out here in uh, Puerto Rico as well. I don't find it weird since China is buying all the gold they can. They are hoarding it. That's right. All the central banks have been hoarding gold. Does JV go live same time every day? No. This week uh, till Thursday will be live same time, but every week it changes because it has to go with my flow of my schedule. My schedule changes up every week. That's why it's important. Make sure you got all the notifications turned on, right? That way you get notified. Hopefully YouTube notifies you when I go live. So for example, uh, till Thursday, we'll be going live at 12 p.m. Eastern. Then Friday, we'll probably flip it to a different time and Saturday, go back to 4 p.m. and yada, yada, yada. And we do have a Bitcoin having probably fi Friday or Saturday. I may be streaming all day for all I know. I, I don't know. So just make sure you got the notifications turned on, yo. What do you guys say? Go long or short at Bitcoin? Never go short. I don't understand the, uh, the, the logic in that at a time like this. JV Powell will have a speech soon. Any predictions for the price? I don't even care what Powell has to say, but yeah, markets unfortunately do react immediately. Let's just hope we pump. If not, let's uh, take advantage of the dip. If we go sub 60,000, we can thank uh, Jay Powell and we can tag him on X. JV goes on about noon on this week and four next week. Yeah, exact the mondo. Jennifer knows. Schiff, Diamond, and Gensler's, <laughs> what does that say? Should buy the island and live on it together. Yeah, they should by Gilligan's Island. I mean, pun intended there, but hey. Peter Schiff got destroyed by Natalie Brunell yesterday on uh, Charles Payne's show. I saw some memes about that. Uh, shout out to Natalie Brunell and Coin Stories. I'm a fan. XRP might probably get the ETF before the Ether ETF just because XRP has been battling the legal matters with the SEC and the U.S. government for quite some time. This is why they're prone to getting the ETF before ETH. Right on, David. I respect your thoughts there. Thank you for sharing. So how long? Long as you can. Just be careful. Uh, I'm 
You know I mean, if you're going to trade with leverage, that's on you. It is always a good time to buy Bitcoin. We will be looking back and say, oh, I wish I bought it at 73 G's, baby. For sure. Uh, sold my motorcycle yesterday and bought Bitcoin with the proceeds this morning. And one year I'll be able to buy a fleet of bikes. Be hold and hold. I dig it. Cheers to that. They closed his bank and he had to pay 300000 in fines. Yeah, they did close down his bank here in Puerto Rico. Ironic enough. And I, I am aware of that. I remember when he was complaining about that when it was going down. Crazy, yo. Good move, DG, says Bluette from DC. Word up. Let's go. Most people probably don't know about Gilligan's Island. Maybe they don't, but that's on them. Don't listen to Shifty. He is stacking. Well, his son is stacking. That's a given. We all know that, right? Uh, shout out to everyone just joining the stream. Pump the likes to pump the stream. Let's get it. We heard Kramer report that. Thank you. He said, he said, sell. We bought more bags. Till we got a sword back. Ah. Can't short your dork. We can't afford that. Anyways, fam, you can't short your dork. We can't afford that. Tell Peter Shifty. But let's dive into our next story of the day. Here's the latest with the Hong Kong e test, which officially got the green light yesterday, as we shared in the podcast. Here's the latest updates. Three recently approved spot Bitcoin and Ethereum ETFs in Hong Kong may not be as big of a deal as some may think, according to senior Bloomberg ETF analyst Eric Balchunez. April 15th, the C. I'm sorry, the SFC issued conditional approvals to three offshore Chinese asset managers to begin issuing spot and Ether uh, ETFs, uh, Bitcoin, that is. Uh, Bitcoin and Ether both got the approval. So, yes, this includes Harvest Fund Management, Bozera Asset Management, and China Asset Management. However, do note Balchunas shot down lofty predictions that the ETFs could generate $25 billion worth of inflows and pointed to four main reasons why crypto investors should temper the expectations for the recently approved products. Quoting him here, don't expect a lot of flows. I saw one estimate of $25 billion. That's insane. We think they'll be lucky to get $500 million, which is a half a billion. Whoa. So he's expecting 50 times less volume than anticipated. Now, justifying his predictions, he explained the Hong Kong ETF market is tiny when compared to countries like the U.S., adding that these ETFs don't allow Chinese retail investors with official access to the products. As he outlines here, the latest on Hong Kong spot Bitcoin ETFs that have been approved to exist but not launch yet. Rumor has it launching next week. So to not compete with Dubai's conference, don't expect a lot of the flow. We think they'll be lucky to get 500 million, and he outlines why. Number one, Hong Kong ETF market is tiny, only 50 billion, and Chinese locals cannot buy these, at least officially. Number two, the three issuers that were approved are tiny, no big fish like BlackRock involved yet. Number three, the underlying ecosystem, there is less liquidity. Efficient equals these ETFs will likely see widespreads and premium discounts. Number four, the fees on these are likely to be one to two percent. Nowhere near the dirt cheap fees in the U.S. Teradome. Takeaway, other countries adding Bitcoin ETFs is no doubt additive, but it is nickel dime compared to the mighty U.S market. So let me know if you agree or disagree with that sentiment. And additionally, Balchuna said the capital environment for these funds were far less efficient than elsewhere. And fees would likely be set around the one to 2% mark um, as outlined right there. So it is what it is. Uh, Takeaway, other countries adding Bitcoin ETFs is no doubt, yeah, as I just said. So the chief crypto analyst, Real Vision, former crypto analyst at Bloomberg, Jamie Kaut said that despite recent reservations at the size of the Hong Kong ETF market, the products would open up a massive pool of capital for Chinese investors. Now, notably, the Hong Kong FSC approved the spot Bitcoin and Ether ETFs, and that's the first spot Ether ETF to ever get the approval, just FYI. And something different, they're going to be launched using an in-kind model, meaning new ETF shares can be issued directly using Bitcoin and Ethereum. That's right. So if you're a Bitcoin or an Ethereum holder, you can get exposure directly. The in-kind creation model stands in contrast to the cash create redemption model, which allows issuers to create new ETF shares only with cash. US spot Bitcoin ETFs currently use the cash create model with the SEC fearing that cash create could lead to money laundering and fraud related issues. The spot ETFs are slated for launch in roughly two weeks time. So that could potentially mean by the first day of the new month uh, in May, we may see the final launch of the ETFs out of here in Hong Kong. So let me know your thoughts on that family and what uh, feedback you have from what 
Balchunas had to share. Peter Schiff mentions could be accompanied by a put it in your mouth, Akinelli sound drop rumor. Oh man, that'd be pretty lit. And Thanks for the reminder. I'd love to get that sound drop on the boards here. She's the Chinese government banned Bitcoin mining in April of 2019. Now a 180. Go figure. Even uh, Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, once called Bitcoin an index of money laundering. Now he's all in and his firm holds 270,000 biddies. Go figure. You can't listen to what these criminals say. You got to watch what these mofos do. Just saying. Quote me on that one. Schiff probably sells gold to stack sats. I'm not surprised, mother what. While the long Hong Kong market might be tiny compared uh, to the, oh, the Hong Kong market to the U.S., it is still another market that was not allowed to buy six months ago. Exactly one nation at a time. Bitcoin domination, Mankey. You already know. Schiff probably sells to stack the gold biddies. Well, they say gold is the poor man's Bitcoin. You know I mean? Beating the U.S. to the ETF, ETH, that's right, real. Uh, multitasking, listening to Alex Jones and JV at the same time. Respect, hashtag gay frogs. A shout out to Jones. So Mr. 100 is Dubai. Well, according to Max Kaiser, he believes it is uh, Abu Dhabi. Abu Dhabi is um, in the UAE. And FYI, the UAE is already mining uh, Bitcoin. We're going to be diving into that here in a bit along with the latest news. Uh, so why is the IMF going after President Bukele and the El Salvador crypto laws? Is that a real question? Because they have a Bitcoin standard. They didn't accept the bribe money and they can't control them. That's why. So they'll probably continue spreading FUD about uh, El Salvador because Obviously, they would prefer to control them and give them billions worth of loans they can't pay back and get them off of a Bitcoin standard. But Bukele is nobody's sucker. Paul Williams says more countries will come on board soon. Just spiral over the next few years. Agreed. Think about how many countries are probably secretly buying Bitcoin and getting exposure right now, whether directly or indirectly, family. You already know. We discussed this on yesterday's pod. 20000 at 3.1 thousand ETH, what the price would be, ask little CRO, Arab money is B-I-G money, big money. Agreed. There's a lot of money in the world. A big addressable market, total addressable market, which Bitcoin has yet to tap into. So Bitcoin, it's a baby. It's a pup. It's like nip. It's like 1.2 trillion market cap when you got a 900 trillion total addressable market. We're just getting started, yo. Keep smashing the like, 430 watching. Thank you, Jerome Smith. And shout out to the Rumble fam as well. We greatly appreciate y'all. Keep it coming. Appreciate the comments. Appreciate the support. Wait for the pump to come. We should have bought that. Yeah. So to zero, they really thought that. Again. 3AC, because we blowing it up. You already know, guys. Thank you for the likes and thanks for the subs. And shout out to all the new members of the channel. Respect. The IMF should be my... Yes, precisely what you say, Greg. Precisely. You know what I mean? But anyways, family. You know what time it is? Now let's dive into our featured story of the day. The headline reads, Iraq to start Bitcoin mining on nation state level, according to this pundit. So let's break this baby down because this is big news. Here you go. Amidst a notable diplomatic agreement between the U.S. and Iraq, recent statements by Iraq's Deputy Prime Minister Muhammad Ali Tamman have stirred speculation in the Bitcoin community regarding Iraq's potential entry into Bitcoin mining at a nation state level. Let's go. That's right. During the press conference with U.S. Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, Deputy Prime Minister Tamman discussed a range of initiatives aimed at modernizing Iraq's energy sector and diversifying its economy. And amongst the topics addressed was the utilization of new technologies to capture the flare gas, a byproduct of oil extraction that is often burned off and wasted. Flared gas capturing is a significant point of interest for the Bitcoin community as this excess gas can be converted to electricity and used to power mining operations. This process only provides an economically viable solution to a waste problem, but also aligns with global efforts to reduce environmental pollution, an issue highlighted by Temin in his speech. 
quoting him here, the government of Iraq is working for the prosperity of the Iraqi people at the same time to pay their debts of the Iraqi nation. Now, especially when it comes to the different phases of the energy sector and the use of new technologies and modernization of the energy sector to reduce pollution. The government is widening its partnership and conducting agreements so to be able to, for example, use technologies to capture flare gas, he said, emphasizing the shift towards innovative and sustainable energy solutions. This development has prompted Joe Kerr, a noted Bitcoin pundit known as X, to suggest that Iraq might be, oh, known on X as Boomstick44, to suggest that Iraq might be moving towards adopting Bitcoin mining on a large scale. Uh, Quoting him here on crypto Twitter, or crypto X, tell me your country is going to start mining Bitcoin for the U.S., without telling me, Iraq's deputy uh, prime minister, as quoting him here on X, I think I have it pulled up right here, the government of Iraq is working for the prosperity of the Iraqi people at the same time to pay their debts for the Iraqi nation, especially when it comes to the different phases of the energy sector, and to use new technologies and modernization of the energy sector to reduce pollution. The government is widening its partnership and conducting agreements, so it will be able to, for example, use technologies to capture the flare gas. So very interesting. And uh, continuing on with the story, and in addition to the potential environmental and economic benefits, the prime minister also touted on enhancing their tourism, following the playbook of none other than El Salvador, shout out Bukele, which has integrated Bitcoin into its economy, being the first nation to adopt Bitcoin as a legal tender and enhancing its appeal to a global audience interested in the king crypto. El Salvador's adoption of Bitcoin as legal tender has indeed sparked interest in the tourism sector, suggesting a potential path for Iraq to link technological innovation with economic diversification. And while official confirmation from the Iraqi government regarding the start of the Bitcoin mining operations is pending and pure speculation at this time, the connections drawn by Kerr between the deputy prime minister Tanem's comments are noteworthy and underscore a growing trend of nations leveraging Bitcoin to address economic and environmental challenges. As reported, already six countries officially mine Bitcoin on a nation state level. These include the obvious El Salvador, we have the Kingdom of Bhutan, Russia, Remember, more recently, they're even creating a Bitcoin mining hub, which was announced on the news in Ethiopia. We also have the United Arab Emirates, which is the UAE. Can you say Abu Dhabi? We have Omen as well as Ethiopia, as I just pointed out. So, for example, Bhutan had been secretly spending millions of building a national Bitcoin mining operation to avert an economic crisis. In my opinion, all the smart money right now is getting exposure to Bitcoin, whether directly or indirectly. What nation will or is uh, speculation right now, uh, Mr. 100, according to Max, his sources are leaning towards Abu Dhabi. Some are saying Qatar could be another country in the Middle East, could be another country not even on our radar. When you start to calculate all this adoption from the nation state level, things get very exciting because we have a very limited amount of Bitcoin. We have a halving in one week, uh, what I say, 1.8 million Bitcoin left on the exchanges. According to the top analysts, we can have a legitimate supply shock within nine months. That's just based on the existing ETF demand. We start to calculate all the undisclosed nation state adoption and everything going on behind closed doors and the retail, yada, yada, yada. This can happen within the next couple of months as Jennifer, um, as pointed out. You know what I mean? Anything is possible. So let me know your thoughts. Where do you feel Bitcoin is likely to take us here this year? Which country or nation state do you think Mr. 100 is that continues stacking them stats? They already have close to 60,000 Bitcoins, and I don't think they're slowing down anytime soon. Holla at your boy and drop a comment. I appreciate it. I'm going to read some of the comments out loud. Million Dollar Bitcoin Party in El Salvador. Let's go, McFootinator. Hey, hey, let's go. The U.S. government wants Iraq to mine it so they don't have to dirty their hands with the dirty crypto. The U.S. government is a piece of ish. Whoa, deep, Jennifer. The government. I love that. That's right, the government. (laughs) The U.S. government. It is what it is. And we also know the U.S. government does have a lot of exposure to Bitcoin because they own, they have a piece of all the biggest stocks in the S&P 500, the Bitcoin mining stocks, as well as MicroStrategy, right? So BlackRock has exposure, for example, 
11 trillion asset manager. They have exposure to everything. So the United States not only has hundreds of thousands of confiscated Bitcoin, which I believe they took from the hackers, from you know uh, exchanges, et cetera, co through confiscation. They also have all of this exposure. Uh, for example, as I pointed out, and I think it was yesterday's pod, um, what's the big asset management firm Vanguard? Vanguard is the primary shareholder of MicroStrategy and BlackRock is the secondary largest shareholder of MicroStrategy. So they literally have their hands in everything. The US government's not stupid, right? And again, BlackRock alone currently has over 270,000 Bitcoin. What's shocking is they achieved it in 90 days three months since the ETFs have gone live, you know, January 11th. And I don't think they're going to slow down anytime soon. I don't think MicroStrategy is going to slow down anytime soon. You know what I mean? I think it's going to get crazy. Let me know your thoughts. 100,000 to 125,000 by the end of the year, says BS. That's what's up. Up and to the right, y'all. JB, you taught me so much in the last few years. I'm a long-term hodler. I listen to you daily. Thanks for your hard work. Thank you, Anna. Banna, respect. I appreciate it. Thank you. Can you please talk about this some more? Says, I'm not sure what you mean. The DOJ also has the keys to the Silk Road wallets and other confiscated wallets totaling over 8 billion. Good Lord, Greg. So yeah, that's a pretty large holder of Bitcoin, wouldn't you say? Which price roundabout you expect after the halving? As a cycle peak, I can see Bitcoin on a bear scenario hitting 222,000 in a bull scenario, 750, likely somewhere in between. Time will tell not investment advice. This show is only for entertainment purposes only. I do this show to entertain myself while educating people with the latest news, just FYI. Uh, can we get an FJB? Just paid my taxes. Hashtag FJB, please. Thank you, Don George. Love it. She is pampin. There you go. Bitcoin pampin. 62,500. Let's go. Keep up the good work, JV. You're a good dude. Respect, Sammy G. Shout out to all the top Gs. Much appreciated, family. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for supporting the show. Love and light, and cheers. Call me 3AC because I'm blowing it up. Short squeeze, more please. Yeah, it's going to pump. They drop food, but it's still not slowing it up. Mohammed says the cousins in Saudi just placed another buy order for Bitcoin at 30,055. 55, I can see that happening. 30, I'm skeptical. But God bless you, family. Thank you. What does that say? LGBFJB. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. Big picture surpassing the gold market cap. Hashtag FJB. Can you talk about the confiscation laws and what it means for us private wallet holders? Is something the government can come? Yeah, they can. According to Max Kaiser, they will. Uh, the U.S. government is very shady. You can't trust them. They've had the Gold Confiscation Act. I think that was 1933, and history has shown us they will confiscate your gold. They've done it before, so what's to stop them from doing it again? And uh, anything like that, they can uh, confiscate, including stocks, right? So that's the downside of having, for example, versus self-custodied Bitcoin, having ETF Bitcoin, because according to Max Kaiser, eventually the government is just going to confiscate all the Bitcoin ETF BTC. Then you may, well, why would they do that? How would they do that? Well, number one, they can do anything they want. It would be as simple as uh, JB creating an executive order to say, uh, in the name of national security, Bitcoin is a threat to our monetary system. So therefore, uh, we are confiscating or banning uh, Bitcoin or taking all of the Bitcoin ETF to protect America. And they can do it. And then Coinbase uh, just would have to give them all their self-custodied Bitcoin. And Coinbase is the primary custodian for the major asset managers minus Fidelity. They're the asset manager uh, custodian. I mean, they're the custodian for BlackRock and GBTC and many of the others. So is it possible? Yes. Can they do it? Absolutely. Will they do it? It's a different question. But again, Max believes they will. I'm in the same boat. I don't trust them. I don't trust the government. So I believe they would do it as well because in their crypto bills from like Pocahontas, you know, Elizabeth Warren, they're trying to ban uh, self-custody wallets. I don't think they're going to have any success with it because you can just remember a code in your brain and Bitcoin properly self-custodied is truly unconfiscatable. But all the other forms of exposure to Bitcoin can be confiscated. Bitcoin mining hubs, they can shut them down theoretically, right? They've done it. They banned Bitcoin mining in China before. Um, 
They could seize your ASIC miners if they truly wanted to and create some law against mining Bitcoin. Not saying that's going to happen because if one country uh, banned it, it would just bring the innovation to new sectors, just like we witnessed with the China Bitcoin mining ban. And then the network was right back on track. But you got to just think, what are they capable of and how far are they willing to go? I do think they recognize Bitcoin as a threat because Bitcoin separates money from the state. So they don't like that. They like issuing the money. They like being in control. And Bitcoin is the one thing they cannot control and they cannot corrupt. It has a finite limited supply. And look how Bitcoin reacts. I mean, we're currently trading at $62,600 per, right, Bitcoin and USD. And again, the power players of the world, they're well aware of the threat Bitcoin um, is to their central banking cartel, and they would do anything in their power to stop it if they could. What's the next best thing if they can't stop Bitcoin and self-custody Bitcoin? Well, they can confiscate all the easy, low-hanging fruit, in my opinion, but let me know your thoughts. A French philosopher, Voltaire, circa 1720, all fiat is eventually returning to its intrinsic value. Zero, well said. Uh, do good with your wealth, all war sucks, and live in peace. Amen to that, and let's point out the obvious. Fiat currency perpetuates war and violence. That's a major freaking problem, wouldn't you say? Bitcoin adoption perpetuates peace, and love, El Salvador being the perfect example since going on a Bitcoin standard, their entire nation has transformed complete 180. And it went from being the most dangerous nation in the world, one of the most dangerous, uh, to being amongst the safest place in the Americas and one of the safest nations on planet Earth. That's due to Bitcoin. So Bitcoin is the future. Evan Burke, uh, thank you for subbing to number one daily Bitcoin pod. Let's get it. Just farming. It says bring facts. Can't beat them. Buy them. There you go, Greg. The IMF will do their best to FUD Bitcoin. They always do. Nothing new under the sun, right? It is what it is. Let them FUD it. Good luck. True Bitcoiners. There's no amount of FUD that can change our minds. No matter what the IMF says, we don't respect them, right? So Pandora's Bitcoin. That's right. Like Pandora's box, Bitcoin's inside. Just saying. Follow CNA on X, please. I appreciate that as well. JV, no questions for now. Just wanted to say we love you and your dedication to the pod and keeping us vermins updated every day. <laughs> we love you. Keep doing God's work, brother. Thank you. 19 Imperial 88. Respect. I greatly appreciate that right here. Thank you. There's two types of fiat. Fiat that went to zero and fiat currency on its way to zero. Precisely. Hillbilly Will. Couldn't agree more. It's all trending towards zero. Bitcoin is the apex predator. All these assets or commodities will eventually trend towards zero. I truly believe that as well. This FUD will never get to me. That's right. And right now, let's, y'all must have forgot, 80% of the Bitcoin supply is in the hands of the long-term hodlers. There's nothing you can do to shake us. Nothing. No amount of FUD, right? We've seen it all. <laughs> Even when all the Americas uh, captured crypto, it doesn't cover the budget deficit. <laughs> True. What is the deficit right now? Like 35 trillion in the States? Yo, good morning, JV. A uh, shout out, Shaw Films. Respect. Thanks for your elaborated answer to my previous question. Very much appreciated. Uh, you're very welcome, uh, Samuel. My pleasure. Thanks for asking the question because the more questions, the merrier the more content we get to share and the more interaction, I appreciate it. Uh, if gas was a buck 80 tomorrow, do you sell what's in your tank to fill up everything you can hold liquid? Hmm. Well, uh, do you think Bitcoin will only be a store of value or will substitute other currencies? Um, I think it has many use cases. I think the primary use case, especially from an institutional level, is the store value and maybe speculation as well. However, um, Bitcoin can also be used as a form of money. We see that in El Salvador. If more nations adopt Bitcoin as a legal tender and more developments with the Lightning Network, then naturally, why wouldn't people use it? I also believe that as a world reserve currency, Bitcoin has the potential to become one of many world reserve currencies. It's perfect money. There's no better, you know what I mean, solution. El Salvador adopts Bitcoin, but also imprisoned about 100,000 gangbangers. Now, Question, is, is that a, a bad thing that you bring that up or 
is that a good thing in your opinion? Now, if they're truly all gangbangers, I think they're doing a fantastic job. And that's the reason why it's now one of the safest places in the world. If you had 100,000 gangbangers like you have here in the United States, only there's millions, uh, that's a problem. And that's why uh, cities like Chirac are very uh, dangerous to visit. There places in New York, uh, places in Florida, and places in Puerto Rico, places all over the world. London is known for stabbings, right? San Francisco. Have you seen any of the videos of all the homeless drug addicts on the streets? It's like the walking dead, just the apocalypse. So it is what it is. Now, don't get me wrong. If people are being falsely imprisoned left and right, there's a fucking, oh, sorry, there's a major problem. But I like to believe that Bukele is doing the right thing and seeking true criminals and gang members. And it's kind of easy to tell who the gang members are when their entire body 100% is covered with gang tattoos. I mean, come on now. Um, anyways, uh, bro, NYC is not dangerous. For real? Hmm. There's shootings in NYC all the time. I see videos trending every day in New York. Uh, of shenanigans and craziness. I know it's dangerous. Uh, I've lived there. You know I mean, now are there more dangerous cities or towns versus less? Of course, you got everything in between as well. That's a given. Just like in Puerto Rico, there's places I would not hang out after dark. And of course, there's places you can go to anytime that are very safe and nice. It all depends upon you know what you choose. He is doing the right thing, says Greg. I've lived in New York City for 32 years, never an issue. Well, that's because you're probably a good person. You're not hanging out with drug dealers or looking for trouble to each their own. I mean, I lived in New York as well, and I didn't have any trouble. You know what I mean? But I know where you can find trouble. That's for sure. All cities are dangerous. Good point. Exactly. That's That was the bigger picture I'm trying to make. Uh, NYC brain is different. Uh, I uh, tripped over a Glock while visiting Chicago. Are you ishing me? Like, for real? You really trip over a, a random Glock on the street? I lived in Philly. That's a dangerous city. Facts. Is that where the wire was uh, shot? Which city was that? I don't remember if that was Philly or somewhere else. Or that was maybe VA or something. Never hang out on the east side. <laughs> you couldn't pay me to go to New York. Well, you couldn't pay me to live in New York. I'll visit. What are your thoughts about enforcing a rule on enticing more long-term hodlers into the network to avoid short-term trade joining? This would safeguard the price on the upside. Enforcing a rule? I don't know about enforcing anything. Uh, when you see the tattoos, it's an admission of being a gangster. So thank you for your cooperation. I mean, you can't fix stupid. You cannot fix stupid. Crime is crazy where I live, South uh, Sacramento. I've been to Sacramento. Shout out Sacramento. Spilling over from the Bay Area. Oh, boy. Oh, Baltimore. Be more for the wire. Thank you. That's right, Baltimore. Thank you, Emily. Yeah, so in El Salvador, if you get the gang's tattoos with being a member, they will deal with you. They are revealing. Uh, they do have a small percentage of wrongfully accused people in El Salvador, but most citizens can live with it. Right on BS. Uh, what up from Boston? Now think about even in the United States, how many people do you think have been falsely imprisoned? I'm going to speculate a lot because I have been falsely imprisoned. I got arrested under false pretenses. It took a year to go through a trial and you know I had to waste a crazy amount of money on lawyers. Long story short, I was found not guilty and they made a mistake, but it happens all the freaking time, especially to men, right? So there's a lot of people in the prison cells all over the world who have been falsely incarcerated due to maybe a false police report or someone setting you up or someone trying to take advantage of you. For example, I don't know how many times I've heard crazy stories, a, a corrupt cop setting people up, planting drugs in their car to get the arrest and things of this nature. Ish does happen everywhere. So we got to keep that in mind as well. You know what I mean? Philly, we're one of the ones that destroyed a hitchhiking robot just because they could. It survived going across the country and didn't survive Philly. Are you for real? I meant without being a member. Oh, there you go. See this. Remember when OJ was in his... <laughs> Yeah. Uh, voting doesn't change a thing. Do for yourself. That's right. Uh, all it does is give us false hope on false idols that don't care about us, nor do they serve us. In my opinion, I got arrested on a false pretense by my own mother. Are you for real, KJM? 
That's crazy. Jails are full of innocent people. I know that for fact. I've seen a lot of uh, like, uh, documentaries on it. There was one guy that got falsely imprisoned for murder for like 50 years, a black gentleman, and then they finally proved his innocence like so many decades later. And his main objective was educating people in the prison because there are a lot of people who have been falsely imprisoned and he helped like hundreds of people who were falsely in prison. It was one particular like corrupt, dirty cop who was notorious for falsely setting, like setting people up and imprisoning them. And they found out he single-handedly was like responsible for like crazy amount of false imprisonments. So they had to let all the guys go, but it was decades later. Talk about craziness, yo. There was even a movie uh, with Denzel Washington uh, based on a true story. I saw it, it may have been called The Hurricane, it was a true story about a boxer, and he was also falsely imprisoned. They set him up, you know what I mean, because he was black, pretty much, and there was a corrupt cop or something, and he was falsely imprisoned. Similar story. There's so many of them. It's mind-boggling, you know? It was, that was a very good movie, by the way. I remember The Roots uh, did uh, the main track on the soundtrack. Shout out Black Thought. John Jones in trouble with the law for threatening the drug tester. Allegedly, I don't know if I believe it, you just never know, yo. Keep in mind, when you're worth millions of dollars, people do some effed up things to you to try to shake you down because they want what you have. I'm not saying he is innocent, of course, but I'm just saying I would not be surprised. You know what I mean? I love Bitcoin, but unfortunately, nothing can fix hate. The Bob Dylan song says the quiet man, Vance Pole, especially for false women accusations. It's out of control. I mean, the Tates are a perfect example of that. Uh, women can make up any story and ultimately get a man incarcerated and destroy their life. Um, it's sad. And <laughs> the more uh, Bitcoin you have, the more of a target you will become. So never let no one know what you hold, family. Be smart. I got arrested on false pretenses too, says Matt, about two years ago of my life to sort it out. Never going to move in with a woman again. Uh, got made homeless too. Um, yeah, I can relate to that one. <laughs> it's like crazy world we live in. Uh, at least when you get locked up, they can't, they can't steal your biddies. Most people lose their house and their job. Good point. Got to count your blessings. What do people think of Bezos playing, paying less percentage for tax than his employees? Personally, I think uh, tax is the biggest scam to ever exist. They don't really need our tax money. They just choose to take it from you to keep you impoverished especially the middle class, or I uh, should say the lower class. The rich people don't really pay taxes, right? I know, uh, what's his name? Cuban was flexing on uh, X. Look, I paid $280 million in taxes. Uh, it was like, big deal, Mark. Nobody cares. I have a wrecked yacht, that's all. Uh, we going back up or what? Apparently, new kombucha in the glass bottle, baby. Shout out to the brew doctor, right? But anyways, fam, here's what we're going to do. We're going to continue with the uncensored version of the pod exclusively on Rumble. If you're new, I stream live every day on two platforms, YouTube and Rumble. When the YouTube stream is finito, we continue with the exclusive uncensored version only on Rumble. So head on over to Rumble now. The link is rumble.cryptonewsalerts.net. I'm pretty confident KJAM will be dropping it here in the live chat. And also, you can find it in the show notes or simply just type in rumble.cryptonewsalerts.net. And I'll see you guys there. I'm looking forward to it. Everyone, head on over to Rumble. Thank you, KJam. You're always right on it. And yeah, man, this is some good kombucha here. It is Bobby approved, just FYI, uh, and JV approved, even better. Uh, but anyways, head on over to Rumble, and let's get ready to rumble, shall we? I appreciate you guys. See you soon. Peace.